All right, yo, what's going on, everybody? This is Easter here, back with another video. First day of round two. Already some pretty good upsets here. Uh, round of 32. No. Yeah, second round, so round 32. Uh, the first game, early in the morning, around the afternoon, really. Number 18, the Carolina beat number one seed Baylor. Um, you know, it's going crazy with this one. However, honestly, I, I picked this upset. I think Baylor had a lot of injuries this year and not the same team that they were earlier in the season. And I think they deserved a one seed. Um, I thought this was going to be a really quick pick, easy pick, and I was correct. The climb was actually up by about 25 points, so we're pretty much dominating them. But Baylor almost pulled the come back, went into overtime. Um, let's go look. They don't have any of the stats up. Why? Interesting. No stats up. Uh, but uh, Baylor, I think, went like one for nine or one for eight in overtime. So obviously they got there, but they just weren't making shots and they lost in overtime. Um, but yeah, not really much of an upset in my opinion. Um, definitely a good pick that I got correct. Number nine seed Creighton playing one seed Kansas. A little bit closer than you would like to think. 79-72, uh, Creighton played a really, good, really great game. But Kansas pulled away late. Uh, thankfully, that saved a lot of brackets. Now this is probably, honestly, in my opinion, other than the St. Peter's game beating Kentucky. Uh, this is probably the biggest upset of March Madness. Uh, through see Tennessee after uh, winning the SEC tournament, um, winning it over the likes of teams of like Auburn and uh, Kentucky. A lot of people, myself included, that they were very low as a three seed, thought that they should uh, be a two seed or even a one seed. I thought that they should just be swapped with Baylor and that Tennessee should be the one seed and that Baylor should be a three seed. However, they just lost to Michigan. Michigan does it again. Because here's the thing about Michigan. When, normally when they are a low seed, they're kind of like Michigan State. When Michigan State is a low seed, they're always really, really good and make a run and be a lot of good teams. But when Michigan is a high, Michigan State is a high seed, as we've seen, they lost as a two seed. Same thing with Michigan. Michigan is always... Sometimes they have a really bad year, regular season, but in the tournament, they show that they're a blue blood, and they always perform, and they always play a lot better. Um, and they're doing it again. They just beat Tennessee, which is one of the favorites to do really well in the tournament, maybe even upset Arizona and go to the Final Four. Um, let's kind of see why that happened. Ooh, three-pointers. See, Tennessee has some really good three-pointers. Three point shooters, uh, but they only went two of 18. That's 11 percent. Only shot 12 free throws to Michigan's 20. Um, the Michigan had a lot of turnovers, they only had seven. Let's, let's go to that one player. It's this guy, just one of five of oh, six from three. Let's see how, um. Fulkerson only had six points. I was actually watching the end of the game, and uh, the Wolverines just pulled away late and just made those tough shots at the end of the game that uh, Tennessee didn't. It's a little sad. Very, very bad for my bracket, obviously. Uh, and now I look kind of dumb, I guess, because I'm one of the components, as a lot of people were, that Michigan should not be in the tournament and that A&M should be in. And I still believe in that. I think A&M had the better season and deserved the spot. However, Michigan is playing well. And I think if A&M came in, they could be playing just as well. However, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if Michigan can keep this going. Um, fooling a lot of people this year, definitely. Number 12 seed Richmond, their uh, Cinderella story ends, and they lose to number 4 seed Providence. Uh, I was one of the people that picked Providence to lose in the first round, thinking that they weren't a very good team. And I still think that. I just think that they have now a very easy road. And I think once they finally play a good team, they're going to get thrashed. And I still believe that until they prove me wrong. Um, they're just a very, very lucky team. So, yeah. Number five seed, St. Mary's, beats number 
gets beat at number four seed UCLA, 56-72. Not really much of a close game. Um, St. Mary's had a pretty good season this year. Beat Gonzaga once, lost to him twice. Um, a lot of people thought they were going to lose to Indiana. Myself included, I actually had them being upset by Indiana uh, in the first game. However, they demolished Indiana, however, lose to the much better UCLA team. UCLA had a pretty rough season of what we thought they were going to be. They thought they were going to be like a really tough team, maybe even a top seed. Uh, still a four seed, not too good, but we not too bad, but we thought they were going to be a little bit higher the last seven games. thought that they might be able to actually win the, uh, the Pac-12, what we've got to see, a really tough conference this year. But UCLA is... Uh, a pretty good tournament here. I think they might get into form, and if they do, they definitely have a strong, strong, strong chance of uh, going to the Final Four because they have a pretty easy road compared to other uh, regions. 15 seed St. Peter's does it again, guys. They are now the third team in the entire history of the NCAA tournament. Uh, the first one being Florida Gulf Coast, the third team, when they beat Georgia State, Dunk City. Uh, the second one being last year's team, Old Roberts, to go to the uh, Sweet 16 as a 15 seed. And they beat Murray State, number seven seed, who was supposed to say play Kentucky. People say, oh, now they're not play Kentucky. Murray State is a very easy road. Not so fast. St. Peter's beats them 70 to 60. Number four seed, Arkansas, play number 12 seed, New Mexico State, who upset at UConn uh, in the first round. Pretty good game, pretty low scoring game, 53 to 48. Arkansas pulls off in the end. It was a really, really, really close game. Number nine, Memphis, playing number one, Gonzaga. Memphis at seat up. Big at the half. And then Gonzaga just turned it over on its head and pulled off the win. And that would have been a very, very huge upset because Gonzaga, other than Arizona, are the two teams most projected to win the national championship. So that would have been a big team. Big time loss. However, I think Memphis was a really good test for Gonzaga. And I think that after having this really big test where they almost lost to a really, really, really good team, I think this will empower them to do really, really well in the tournament and could be the Turning the tide to get them back in the championship and seeing if they actually win one for once. But that is the end of the. No, that's, the that's the first day of the second round. We now have got some more games coming today. We'll be taking a look at uh, and we'll see how those do. Anyways, again, another day, another upsets we've got. Let's see how many upsets we've got. One. This one's really not really big enough. That's still upset. This one's a huge upset. We've got one, two, three. Three upsets, almost four right here. And all these games are pretty close. At least the ones that mattered. I mean, this game, this game. Yeah, only two games were not really close at the end. So really great day of basketball. I'm excited to see what we got going at tomorrow. Or actually today, excuse me. Fumbling around my words everywhere. Houston, Illinois is looking to be a good game. I think this could be... A good game. I mean, they all could be a good games. Only game that I could see being an <clears throat> upset is right here. Now, Richie is a very good defense. We'll see what happens. Anyways, thanks for watching. As I always say, please let me know how your brackets are doing. And uh, leave a like if you can. And uh, stay frosty. See you next time.